Hey everyone, today I'm gonna show you how I prepare my point shoes for rehearsals and performances. These are a custom point shoe. They've been customized through many years of trial and error, just kind of figuring out what works. Everyone's feet are different, so um, it's definitely a process to figure out what uh, works best for you both aesthetically and in terms of what can really support your technique. Just a little disclaimer, <laughs> point shoes are pretty expensive and when I was a student obviously my parents couldn't afford to buy me a lot of point shoes so I would have to make one pair last for several months at a time. So I'm just showing you my ritual um, of breaking them in and obviously this is something I'm able to do because I as a professional dancer I receive as many point shoes as I need. But if you're a student and you're working with, you know, a limited budget, please be <laughs> aware that a lot of the breaking in that I'm doing is not a good idea for you. It's also, I think, sometimes good for younger dancers or dancers who are starting out on point to not do a lot of breaking in because it helps you develop the strength that you need in your feet. And one other thing, it's just really important to not go on point until, you know, the age of maybe like 10 at the very earliest. I think I went on point when I was 11 or 12. If you go on too early, it can be really dangerous and you can um, mess up your bones and ligaments in your feet and we all want to have long, healthy, athletic careers, so it's definitely not a good idea. Okay, so the first thing I do is I roll back the heel and then I detach the shank, um, which I have to do carefully because I don't want it to break. There we go. Um, so as you can see, one of the customizations that I have done is I have the shank three-quartered to begin with. You can see where the shank is chopped. So I do that on both shoes. Okay, and then once I've detached the shank, I just sort of bend them a bit like this. And the next thing I do is I put them flat on the ground, just like this. And then I'll go ahead and smash them down with my heels. It's a very satisfying crunch because it flattens them out and makes this a little bit more streamlined. Now that I've done that, I usually put them on just with nothing sewn, just because I want to check them out and make sure they feel pretty good so I'm not wasting my time sewing them. Um, sometimes you'll get a pair that's just defective. Who wants to spend extra time sewing point shoes that they can't even wear to rehearse or perform in? So, all right, these feel pretty good. Basically what I'm looking for when I do that is just to feel that the toe is flush so it's not like, doesn't feel wobbly and unstable. All right, so next step is gonna be to sew. Sewing is basically the bane of every ballerina's existence. <sighs> I have spent many an hour sewing point shoes and it's definitely not something I enjoy, but because we all have such unique customizations that we want done to our point shoes and the way that we sew them is very individual, um, you just kind of have to do it yourself. There was one time when James Whiteside, AKA Cindy, so generously volunteered to help me sew. And um, he sewed a pair of point shoes and I literally, I put them on and did one releve and <laughs> all the ribbons snapped off. So it's definitely not a bad idea to do it yourself. So you know that you're not gonna hopefully lose a ribbon when you go on stage. This thread I got from Tomoko, who is the uh, head of wardrobe at American Ballet Theater, and she's brilliant. This thread is called High Mark, and the color is, gr cool. I don't know, actually. <laughs> but anyways, I really like High Mark. That's actually the best thread that I've found. It's very strong and durable. A lot of people use floss, which I don't like as much. I don't really like the waxiness of it, but some people prefer it. This is a bun head needle from the bun head stitch kit, which is a pretty good needle for sewing point shoes. This is the kind of elastic that I use. It's mesh and I like it because you can't see it. It blends in with your tights. One thing that I do that's, I guess, somewhat unique is I use one elastic ribbon and then I use one like regular freed ribbon. Um, the reason I like to do one of each is because I feel like it gives me the perfect amount of elasticity. If I just use this guy, it ends up 
like gapping. If I use both elastic ribbons, then I feel like my heels slip down. So it's a good compromise for me to use one of each. Okay, so I'm gonna start sewing. So I always start with the elastic ribbon and I just attach it right at the heel, if you can see. And I actually sew my point shoes with the elastics on the outside, which maybe isn't doesn't look as good as if you sew it on the inside, but I find that it um, it rubs and like gives me blisters. Ah, gotta do a knot here. Uh, yes, I have one press on nail remaining, classy. My goal is usually just to get this process over with as quickly as possible. I usually go through like when we're in rehearsal and performance mode up to five pairs a week. So obviously sewing five pairs a week if it takes me like 30 minutes to um, break in and sew a pair. I guess it's not that much time, two and a half hours, but still it's two and a half hours of your life that you could be doing something way more fun. One elastic down, time to move on to the next one. Set it up right on the other side of the heel. I've definitely had my heel of my point shoes slip off in performance, which is a real bummer. <laughs> also it could be kind of dangerous. Um, I always put rosin on my heels of my tights before I go on stage and that ensures that the heel of the point shoe can't slide down. So if I'm doing a performance with bare legs, then I usually end up uh, putting makeup on my shoes to try to blend them in with my skin tone because um, basically point shoes just match pink tights. Um, and you always want to have like the most streamlined line Finally. possible. Another thing that's really wonderful is that a lot of point shoe makers have started making point shoes in other skin tones, which is a huge step to be more inclusive. Okay, so now that I've sewn the elastics to the heel, I'm gonna now do the ribbons. Um, so it doesn't really matter which one you start with, elastic or non-elastic. I roll the end. This is how you prevent it from snapping off. So I just roll it like that. Just fold it twice. And then I line it up right behind the seam on the side of the point shoe. And I put it just on top of the elastic, just like that. Where's my needle? So then I just literally follow the same process as before. The ribbons I find come off more easily than the elastic. So I'll just do like four knots, four or five knots, double knots to be a little neurotic here. All right, so now I've done that and I'm going to use the non-elastic ribbon. Just do the exact same thing with that. Fold it over once and then a second time so that it doesn't break. There we go. And then line it up right behind the seam on top of the elastic, just like that. Just keep repeating this process until all four of the ribbons are affixed to the point shoe. I'm pretty sure that all of the materials, or at least most of the materials that my point shoes are made out of are natural materials and so they're not plastic. But I do think one area that point shoe makers can improve is with their packaging. There's a lot of plastic single-use packaging being used. Um, and I just encourage everyone to feel free to reach out to these companies and encourage them to do better. This is infuriating. When I was a kid, my mom would sew my point shoes for me when I first went on point. Ah, those were the good old days. Shout out to all the moms and dads who sew your kids' shoes and buy your kids' shoes. It's not cheap. Whether I want to wear like harder shoes or more dead shoes really depends on the role that I'm performing. For roles that are more virtuoso and have a lot of turning, like Black Swan, for example, I really like to wear pretty new hard shoes. Um, so then I feel supported and lifted. I also find it much easier to turn in hard shoes, but actually balancing I find is much easier in dead shoes. So um, when I do Sleeping Beauty Act One for the Rose Adagio, I wear like the deadest shoes imaginable and I can kind of feel them like melting on stage, but for some reason it helps me stay up perched on point. Okay, last ribbon, yes. Those ballet boys really don't know what they're missing out on. All this fun. 
I guess they have to sew flat shoes though, so that's something. They just don't have to sew as many pairs as we do of point shoes. Yeah, I find it really interesting how a lot of people have this idea of um, point shoes and women wearing point shoes. That's almost like a fetish with the point shoe in general. I love the fact that, you know, fashion and ballet have always taken inspiration from each other from, you know, back when Coco Chanel designed costumes for the ballet roofs um, to today when we collaborate with so many awesome designers. But... I do think dancers get irritated, myself included, when we see um, like certain depictions of ballet within fashion that don't really necessarily feel informed. Like for example, when you see someone who's clearly has no ballet training wearing like modeling point shoes in a fashion spread and like the ribbons are laced up to their knee. I love the fact that fashion is drawing inspiration from ballet, but I think the reason we get irritated about it is because there are so many wonderful dancers out there um, who could really use those kinds of opportunities and that kind of exposure. So whenever brands do go out of their way to find that special dancer, it definitely is appreciated from you know, Misty starring in an Under Armour commercial or David Hallberg doing Nike. There are so many examples. Yeah, it's definitely appreciated when brands do the research to actually depict it with accuracy and care and use actual dancers. Yay, the point shoes have been sewn. <laughs> Mission accomplished. Okay, so next I'm just gonna show you the finishing touches. Now that the point shoes are ready, I'm going to put them on. So one thing that is perhaps alarming to some is that I actually I don't wear any toe pads. I don't necessarily recommend doing that because I think it's definitely taken a toll on my feet, but I'm used to it and I've built up a lot of calluses and toughness in my feet to enable me to um, dance without padding. The reason I don't wear any padding is in my shoe is because I feel like I'm able to control and feel the floor better, but then again, it's just what you're used to. So I'm by no means am I recommending that approach. My fake nail came off finally. I've been waiting for that to, to transpire. <laughs> so I tie them on the inside, just in front of my Achilles here, and then tuck it in. If I had a show, I would trim the ribbons down so that they um, there wasn't as much of a risk of coming out. I would cut this little like extra business here. Just cut that business off. Just kind of test them out. Okay, they feel pretty good. Yeah, and I find that the more that I wear them, the more they form and shape to my feet. And oh yeah, <laughs> before the show, I usually go and bang the crap out of them on the stairs. <laughs> Just because I want to be quiet when I'm on stage. But I don't bang them for rehearsals just because that deadens the shoes a lot more quickly. And clearly sewing point shoes isn't my favorite activity. So I try to minimize that. Well, thank you so much for watching. I hope that was perhaps informative or at least entertaining. And feel free to ask any questions in the comments and make sure you subscribe to my YouTube channel. Thanks, bye.